Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks for joining me for a breaking news video on Warren Buffett and his decision to sell out of all of the airline stocks. And now you can see behind me, I've got here Buffett down, Bitcoin up. And this is a breaking news video. This news is gonna get old very quickly. So rather than waste your time, I wanna share with you something extra throughout the video that hopefully you and I and all the rest of us can make a little more money on than if we had bought into the airline stocks when we had listened to Warren Buffett saying he was buying in. Now, I just wanna make mention that I don't own any of the airline stocks. I am just reporting on uh, Warren Buffett's decision to sell out of them because I see this as another opportunity within the markets to make some money elsewhere. What I will cover is my thoughts on the economic cycles coming up from here. So if you're a long-term viewer of the channel, you know that I love to discuss the 18.6 year property cycle and how that blends in with the stock market and how we can make money from that. Also cryptocurrency, of course, Bitcoin is my thing. I really love the cryptocurrency markets because of the opportunities they present compared to our traditional markets that is stocks and property. I'll give you a rundown of all of the straightforward detail that you can read on any news article out there and then I'll add in my two cents at the end. So what we see first up is Warren Buffett bought around seven, eight billion dollars worth of airline stock back in March. We know this from the reports. You can also see one of my old videos probably from about two weeks ago uh, showing that Warren Buffett had sold off some of his position. So he had bought in March, sold some in April, and there was a consensus that he sold that off to get underneath the 10% ownership of a company so that he didn't have to report what he was doing. Lo and behold, that's probably why he did it, but of course we didn't know the full extent of why he was doing it. And it came up in the conference or the press conference that he was doing uh, in regards to Berkshire Hathaway, saying that when he sells, he sells, he's all out. So I guess that might be something to remember for the future if we hear Warren Buffett selling again, you could be pretty certain that he'll be all out. Obviously the, the guy can change his mind at any time and you know, go against that rule. But in this case, he said he was all out of stocks. Once he started selling, he was all out. The reason being, he mentioned in the report as well, was to say that uh, he was wrong essentially and he thought he would get a good return on his investment. So that seven to eight billion obviously had a little bit more in the rest of the airlines and he was looking for about a billion dollar return on the seven to eight billion, not in dividends, but just in terms of capital growth. That didn't happen, he was wrong. The outlook, his point of view of course, uh, the outlook for the airlines is that he doesn't think it's going to return to normal. He thinks that there's gonna be a lot of changes within passenger mentality. So the passengers might be down as well. It might take several years for that to make a comeback to where we were pre-COVID and that is obviously gonna lead on to lower profits moving forward. They're still going to hold all of the airlines, so this is the airline companies, they'll have to hold 100% of their planes, but if passengers are down by 20%, they still have to hold 100% of the planes, so they've still got costs up there like they had pre-COVID, but they've now got to try and make even more profits from such a small profit margin uh, initially. On top of that, they face having to repay the loans that they're getting from the government and he's just unsure of how that is going to play out in their profit reporting. So a few key numbers and quotes that I'll read from Forbes. Crucial quote, when we bought airlines, Buffett of course, we were getting an attractive amount for our money, Buffett said. It turned out I was wrong about that business because of something that was not in any way the fault of four excellent CEOs. Believe me, no joy of being a CEO of an airline right now. So here are the big numbers. 6.5 billion is the value of the stock sold by Berkshire Hathaway in the month of April. So we did see a big fall in March and we're not sure when he was selling them. Obviously it was in April, but we don't know what days. It could be in the report. Forbes doesn't list that here. Buffett's conglomerate only bought 426 million worth of equities during that period. We did very little in the first quarter, he admitted. That isn't because we thought the stock market was going to go down, he explained. I just decided that I had made a mistake with airlines. The last massive figure from Berkshire Hathaway is that they reported a massive net loss of $50 billion in the first quarter. The coronavirus market sell-off that occurred in late February through to most of March took a significant toll on the company's business. Buffett's cash pile rose from $125 billion to $137.3 billion as the Oracle of Omaha continues to look for an elephant-sized acquisition. So he's got a nice big cash position, which he already had, but now he's just added another $12.3 billion to it and obviously needs to get out there to be buying something else. Guys, if you're finding a lot of value out of the video, and of course my super tight shirt, which doesn't fit me anymore, 
please leave a like and subscribe down below. Many of you are new here and you haven't subscribed already, so I'd appreciate that as it helps out the channel and allows me to afford to buy new clothes before I rip these. Now back to the video. There's some of the basic numbers from the sale. And I'd like to go over to the Motley Fool now, just talking about should you sell your stocks too? Because I think that's gonna be a big one on a lot of people's minds is they follow Warren Buffett, like he is the Oracle, you know, it's his name. So Warren Buffett does something and people follow suit. So now that he's sold and mentioned that on the weekend when the markets are closed, who knows what's gonna happen on Monday. I dare say we'll see a bit of a fall from Everyone's trying to sell out their airline stocks after hearing this news. But what should you do? Motley Fool says here that they are looking to continue holding their stocks in their airlines. They see it long term that things can continue to go up. They've included a chart here of the losses on the airlines that Buffett was holding. So we've got Southwest, Delta, American and United. Basically everything except Southwest was down around 60 to 70% and Southwest was down 45% from those highs since January and mid-Feb. Another one to keep a lookout for would be Boeing. Obviously Boeing makes the planes for these airlines and if we're going to see airlines not fly as much, we don't know yet. And that's obviously gonna take a hit on Boeing as well as they're not gonna have to produce as many planes. So to Motley Fool, and they say Buffett's now been wrong about airlines multiple times during his long storied career. The airlines are in a world of hurt right now, but I'm betting he didn't get it completely right when he decided to sell this time round either. So they're saying they think Warren Buffett was wrong both times. Obviously, we are all in a completely different position to Buffett. There's no one else out on the internet, and I can say that with confidence, I'm sure you can agree, that is in the position of Warren Buffett watching a YouTube video on American stocks, right? You know, he's got a multi-billion dollar portfolio and he has to make different decisions to what we make. And these stocks are down, like I said, 60, 70%. Surely we could see a bounce, even a doubling in price from some point. We don't know if this is a low or if we've got a little bit further to go. I dare say we have further to go. Just looking at history and what happens in bear markets is we can kind of expect around at least 12 to 18 months of a bear market or sideways or something like that in the negative emotional sense of the market overall. We've had solid 10, 11 years up from the bottom with a few scares in there. But now it comes time to have a bit of a break in the whole positive vibe. There needs to be some negative vibe, that'll take its time and then we're ready to go again. After all that, Motley Fool are saying that they're gonna keep their position of stocks and they think Warren Buffett's gonna be wrong in this case again. So moving on to what we can actually use out of all of this, and of course one would be to continue to look at airlines, potentially they can go up in the future. If we'll go back to the cycles, and we're looking at the 18.6 year cycle. I've got a video on this, I'll leave a link to it up here, you guys can check that out again. Essentially, we are in the mid cycle slowdown. And look, if you haven't heard of these, as I said, go check out the video because there is a lot of, I guess, discrepancies compared to the mainstream thinking where they believe this is the next Great Depression. They see this as a 90 year cycle coming off the Great Depression in 1929 through to 1933. And they believe this time around, what we're currently experiencing in 2020, uh, could lead on for decades to come. That has been a common position from guys like Raoul Pahl and other guys who think that this could be a lot longer extended than the 18.6 year property cycle are guys like uh, Ray Dalio and Warren Buffett himself. This could go on for a little bit longer than they believe. If we look at the cycle, we are in the middle of the 18.6 years. And that generally means we have about one to two years of down or sideways in the market. And then we take off for the second half of this property cycle. Now you're probably wondering, well, why are you bringing a property cycle into the stock market? And basically they run almost simultaneously. One leads the other and it just bounces between them. There is no set science to the exact date, but there are a lot of signs to show when this is happening. So the signs that we saw this time around is that we have seen a fall in the stock market based on finances and people aren't able to get credit. There's a liquidity crisis, there's dollar printing, there's all this sort of stuff going on, but there's nothing to do with land values. And then the basis of this theory on the 18.60 year cycle, which can be seen from over 200 years of data, is that when we get the end of cycle, the major correction, this is always land led. And what that means is that there has to be an complete overvalue of land, not just a little bit, not just an average bit, there has to be a real spike in land value, like we saw in 2007 in the US market, in the UK market, through Europe, there was a huge spike. 
And this is what led to the downfall. This is what led to everything unraveling. And we don't see this in the mid cycle. The mid cycle always comes up as a financial problem. And what generally happens with financial problems is that the government steps in, starts printing more money, brings liquidity, and that tends to boost the markets up again. I'll mention one last sign when it comes to these cycles, and it is looking at the world's tallest buildings. That has been a very good sign that we are coming to the end of a cycle. If you're enjoying the content on the property cycles, I'd love it if you could leave a like and subscribe down below, guys. It really helps out me and the channel, so it gets the content pushed out to more guys. It's all free, put it out there. Love it if you could do that if you are finding value from this. Back to the video. Right now, we don't see the completion of the world's tallest buildings. These buildings are going to be in countries, say, like China, which is developing, the Middle East, which has had a lot of world's tallest. And previous to this, back in the 20s and 30s, it was in the US, in around uh, New York. They had a lot of the world's first tallest buildings, and this led to the end of many cycles. Now, there's a lot I can go into here, but I'll leave that for another video, which I'm planning to make on this topic, because it is quite an in-depth one. If you do want to learn more, go and check it out online, the 18.6 year property cycle. Like I said, I've got a video to it. But for now, I'm going to jump from the property cycle into Bitcoin. And we've seen Bitcoin bounce from these lows that all of the airlines got hit with, or the whole market, obviously, in March of 2020. We saw a low around the 23rd of March. Since that point on Bitcoin, we can see that it has gone significantly higher. And as I film this, we can see that Bitcoin is sitting around 9,130 bucks. So this was the low for a brief moment at 3,850. And from that point, right from the bottom to the top that we saw a few days ago, it's gone up 140%. Now, I don't expect anyone to have grabbed the absolute bottom and sold at the absolute top. Like no one's done that. But what we could say is here wasn't such a bad area to, to buy. You had a few days at around 5,000 to 5,003. If you'd held to this point, you'd still be up 44%. If you'd held just recently now, you'd be up around 70%. Now, it doesn't look like it's gonna slow down anytime soon because we have the halving coming up, but it could see some fallback from this point. Generally, what I've seen in Bitcoin is that it likes to go and make big ranges, just like we've seen here. And from that point, it likes to come back and just start to fill in that price area here. So you can see we had this huge fall and it slowly come back and started to fill in that price area, right around there to there. So you can see this whole gap that it just shot through in price, it's come back and played with that. I think that's gonna happen again here. So maybe we'll get another chance to get in at around 7,900, maybe to 8,400 because uh, right now we see ourselves at 9,100. So that's maybe a 10, a uh, little more percent fall. So I don't know whether it's worth the risk, but that could be a possibility. So now you're probably asking, why have I gone from stocks to property cycles to Bitcoin? And that's because this is where I see the best value, the best potential for a return in the market, in any sort of asset market. So I'm using the property cycle because that plays in very nicely with the stock market and I can understand which part of the cycle we are in. Are we at the end? Are we in the middle? Are we about to take off? Because all of these parts of the cycle express different emotions in the market and that's a point where we're super fearful or we're super greedy and we need to take a step back to realize where we are on this ladder essentially it's like a road map it's like getting out google maps and seeing where at point a we need to get to point b how far are we to point b and does that mean i'm ready to go in a little bit heavier on certain things you know do i have a bit more time left essentially we're using it as a road map so that we know how far we've got left to travel. If we can't get into property because we don't have a lazy 50, 100, 200 grand sitting around to get ourselves a loan, then we can get into the stock market and buy property shares. The other side to this is cryptocurrency. And now we don't see cryptos move in line with the stock market, but crypto also has its own cycle. And that's something we can get into in a later video because this video is long enough right now. But essentially I wanted to bring up Bitcoin as a possibility to add to 
uh, someone's portfolio. And if Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are something else that you want to add to your portfolio, check out the other videos on my channel. I'll leave cards throughout the video up here. Also go and check out the link below. You can sign up to Independent Reserve from anywhere around the world to purchase your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I've also got a link down there for crypto.com. They're an excellent cryptocurrency company. They have a debit card that you can use anywhere around the world that accepts Visa. All you have to do is load that up with cash or crypto and you can sell the crypto quite easily on their exchange to have cash on that card. I love that. I'm going to do a few more videos on it. I've got my own card, so I'll do a couple of videos on that and show you how to use it exactly. But if you're quite familiar with how to set up exchanges, go and check out my links down below for one independent reserve, which is primarily Australian, but can be used anywhere around the world that you can connect your bank account or international bank account to, to buy your cryptocurrency. You can also do it with crypto.com. Now with these two as well, obviously there is a good referral to it. I'm not sure whether it's obvious, but a lot of these companies do offer referrals. Crypto.com has got 50 US dollars if you sign up and use their service. Do your own research, of course. Ask me questions down below in the comments if you've got anything you wanna learn about cryptocurrencies or how to get into them. I'll leave a link to my video up here about how to buy crypto and Bitcoin in Australia. Step-by-step -step process. I hope you guys will love that. You can catch me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm basically on there daily talking anything in regards to finance, fitness, and food. But until then, I'll see you at the next video. Leave a comment down below. Did you buy airline stocks? What are you going to do with them? And I'll leave it there for now. Thanks again for joining me. If you found this useful, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you at the next video. But until then, remember, take care and have more fun to get more done.